Hello guys, welcome back. This is more 49ers news. Um, sorry if I haven't been on a few days. Been working hard in hospitality. Um, just kicking ass really for the restaurant trade. But no excuses. I'm here. I'm ready. And this is basically day five. I'm about one day behind of the day, uh, day five of the 49ers training camp. But here we are. And yes, here we are. This is the, the good and not so good from day five of the 49ers training camp. Uh, this is analysing the best and the worst performances from day five to 49ers training camp. This is by Grant Cohen, um, who's on um, Sports Illustrated. This is on si.com, sportsillustrated.com, forward slash NFL, forward slash 49ers. Uh, Grant Cohen, check him out on YouTube. He's got a YouTube channel, uh, a YouTube channel, sorry. Uh, keep an eye on this guy. He's amazing. <clears throat> so he was there at day five. He says, uh, here's what. Uh, stood out from day five training camp. Keep in mind the players has not put on pads yet. The first day in pads will be Tuesday. So here we go. The good. Number one, the red zone offense. The 49ers practiced in the red zone for the first time this offseason, which means they installed some of their red zone offense. And it's clear a significant portion of it will feature rookie quarterback Trey Lance, whatever he's the starting quarterback or not. Uh, head coach Carl Shanahan called out runs for Lance in the red zone. And the second one, uh, Lance scored a touchdown. Using Lance as a red zone quarterback would be a good way to get him on the field if he's not the starting quarterback in week one. Okay. Number two, tight end Ross Dewey. Uh, caught two long passes up the seam. Uh, on one of them, uh, Ross be all pro linebacker Fred Warner. Uh, Ross has six catches in training camp while starting tight end George Kittle, who's got paid like a top level wide receiver, has only two catches. More on Kittle below. You better watch out before uh, he comes for next uh, Wiley Pip. Shanahan said Ross has the best hands on the team. Okay, then. Number three, defensive tackle uh, Javon Kinlaw. Uh, participated on 11-on-11 uh, 11 11 team drills for the first time in camp, which means he's finally healthy. Defensive end D Ford, number four, also participated in 11-on-11s 11 for the first time in camp, which is good. Also um, immediately committed two offside penalties, which is bad but not surprising for Ford, uh, who infamously jumped off, uh, offside to navigate a game-winning interception in the AFC Championship against the Patriots when he was on the Chiefs. Okay, number five. Wide receiver, uh, Jalan Hurd. Uh, he returned to practice after missing the previous two. Uh, stretched with the team, but not uh, but did not press, uh, participate on 11 on 11s. Hurd may never actually complete again, but he can stretch. Okay. Linebacker, Fred Warner. Uh, number six uh, made a leaping, spining interception in the red zone while covering Ross, the best player in the league. Okay, number seven linebacker Justin Hillard uh, nearly intercepted uh, Josh Rosson during the 11 on 11s, but intercepted Lance a few plays later. Uh, Justin seems to be the 49ers' best undrafted free agent this year. Number nine, uh, sorry, number eight cornerback just uh, Jason Vern. Nearly intercepted a poorly thrown pass in the end zone by Jimmy G. Uh, Jason gets his hands on so many of uh, Groppolo's passes. You m you could almost consider Jason the 49ers number three receiver. That's mental. Okay, number nine. Cornerback Ambery Thomas uh, took reps with the starters because Tim Harris Jr. is injured and gave up zero catches. Also saw zero targets. Good day for the rookie. Number 10, wide receiver, Richie James Jr. Beat uh, Jamie Ward for a touchdown during one-on-ones uh, and then beat Vern for a touchdown during 11-on-11s. Ward and Vern are the two best players in, the sec in their 49 er secondary. Great day for James. And last one, wide receiver, Kevin White, number 11, caught two short passes and one of them was a touchdown pass from Garoppolo in the red zone. White has been making positive strides all off season. Now, to the not, oh, the not so good. 
number one, tight end George Kittle. Uh, caught zero passes yet again, has hauled in just two catches through five days of the camp, which is strange considering the 49ers are paying him to produce like a number one wide receiver. Instead, they're using him as a blocker and a decoy while they call passes for Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel and Ross Dewey. Kittles is the most expensive decoy in the league right now. He should probably catch some passes soon. I flip a note, so he's got paid a lot. And the second one right now is getting worse. Defensive end, Nick Bosa. So he goes, still hasn't completed or participated in any physical contact. He warms up, then keeps warning up while the rest of the team practices. He should practice two one of these days. He rather, he's rather important. Damn fucking straight. I want to know what's going on with Bosa. I really do. Um, right, number three. Defensive end, uh, Samson Ibukman. Uh, missed practice with sore legs the day after an off day. Hmm. Four, running back, uh, Hasty, uh, fumbled the first time in training camp. Okay. Five, running back, Trey, Ser- Trey Sermon, fumbled the for the second time in training camp. That's not good. Wide receiver, number six, uh, Travis Benjamin, keeps trying to catch passes with his chest plate. Someone needs to tell this guy to use his hands. It's football, not soccer. Uh, it's football, not soccer. Come on, bud. Okay. But I'm telling you something right here, right now. What the fuck is going on with Bosa? All right, Kittle, up and down. Jimmy G, up and down. This is training camp, all right? This is like 60 to 90 minutes or something of training camp. Fine. I understand that. Thank, thank Christ for the off-season. But are you seriously telling me right here, right now, are you seriously telling me Nick Bosa ain't done fuck all this training and he's not vaccinated? If Bosa is not in the middle of this team, we're screwed. I'm not saying it as a, you know, as a, you know, letting my rant out or anything like that. If you do not see him in the off season, you'll see him in the regular season. You'll probably see him in a minimum, or if not maximum, five games. Minimum three, maximum five. That's it. I cannot see Nick Bosa doing the whole entire season. I can't. He ain't doing nothing. That torn ACL has scared him big time. That's what I think. That's my fault on Nick Bosa. That's my fault. That is my fault on this guy. He hasn't done fuck all, nothing, nada, zip for the 49ers practice. Okay, so he's got a torn ACL and he's learning and he's putting in the you know the training for it. What training? This guy needs to get hit. Sounds crazy, sounds stupid, I'm just saying. This guy needs to get hit now. And see what his ACL, what his ankle, what his whole leg can do. Because he's, he's ripped. If he doesn't do nothing this season, I'll be shocked. Like, really, really shocked. But he needs to do something now. Um, tell me your thoughts, guys, on the article. And tell me about Nick Bolsa. I've said my thoughts. You tell me, guys. Leave a comment down below. I'm always happy to listen to everyone's answers. Sorry. Yeah, their answers, their comments, their opinions. Let me know. Um, thank you very much for the 40 subscribers as well. Very fortunate, humble, and appreciated that you guys subscribed. And if you're new, subscribe. So I'll be doing a lot more of 49ers updates or anything 49ers and plus. Uh, link in the description below what we're doing on the off-season and the regular season of the NFL. What I'll be doing, keep an eye on that as well. Look at the link to the, uh, the uh, description as well. And yeah, um, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys uh, on the next video.